Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. December 21st, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. The United States will remember this day in which it was singled out for attack in the General Assembly for the very act of exercising our right as a sovereign nation. We will remember it when we are called upon to once again make the world's largest contribution to the United Nations. And we will remember it when so many countries come calling on us, as they so often do, to pay even more and to use our influence for their benefit. America will put our embassy in Jerusalem. That is what the American people want us to do. And it is the right thing to do. No vote in the United Nations will make any difference on that. But this vote will make a difference on how Americans look at the UN and on how we look at countries who disrespect us in the UN. And this vote will be remembered. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage. Kick the United Nations out of New York City. Kick them out of the United States. They're just taking up good real estate there. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Remember, there are only two days left before Christmas. Two days of shopping, I should say. And this gives you a chance to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Tis the season for God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the Christmas tree this year, and you will not be disappointed. It is truly a fascinating tome, and something that's missing from Christmas. I'm starting to feel it. I'm starting to feel I'm down here in South Florida. I'm sweating <laughs> wonderfully in the warmth, but um, you can start to feel the Christmas season coming around, and A God, Faith, and Reason, Dr. Savage's latest book, will not disappoint this season or thereafter. So check it out. Put God under your Christmas tree. That was the voice of U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina. I've never been a fan of Ambassador Haley. I felt she jumped on the bandwagon there with the whole Confederate flag thing down in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, I'm not uh, a fan, a proponent of the Confederate flag, but I am a historian, and I am a fan of history, and I just felt that that was whittling away at the free speech of some Americans. Whether you agree with them or you disagree with them, that's what that was, and I felt she just jumped on there like a politician. But like Sarah Huckabee Sanders as press secretary doing a great job, I must tip my hat to Nikki Haley doing an excellent job as our representative at the U.N., tough taking nothing from the bullies there, the criminals there in the U.N. And today, the U.N. General Assembly approved the revolution, repudiating the U.S.'s recognition, President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital and our plan to move our embassy there. Now, why shouldn't the United States be allowed to move the embassy uh, in, in Israel to where it wants to be. Whether you agree with it or not is not the issue. The point is, should they be allowed to do it? You might say, yeah, they should be allowed to do it, but I think it's a bad idea at this time. That might be your opinion, or you might agree with it. But the point is not whether it's the right time. That's been debated already. The point is the U.N. The U.N., hates Israel. A bunch of anti-Semites in the Arab countries in the UN. The UN is, in my opinion, a criminal organization, and that is not the opinion of the Savage Nation. That is me, Lou Pate, sitting in here for Dr. Savage today. The uh, United Nations back in 2004 had its own internal integrity study. They haven't done one since. You say, why would you cite something from 2004? They haven't had one since because the internal integrity study, which they really made a bunch of uh, whoop de doo about, <laughs> and they were going to release the results, was so scathing by the people who work there that they decided not to release it, and to this day they haven't. It's basically, you know, a bunch of thugs there who hate America and who hate anything associated with America. The thing that I find disappointing about this is that, well, 100 
and 28 countries voted for the resolution. Uh, 35 countries abstained. Nine, including the U.S., uh, voted against it. But of the 128, uh, U.K. and France were in there. That's disappointing to me. Boris Johnson, the French, you know, you can always count on them to stick it to you, right? But that that's, that's the case there. So it's really disappointing that the U.N., the... Uh, East side of Manhattan, priceless real estate overlooking the East River, right there on 42nd Street. goes from 42nd Street up to 49th Street, Beekman Place. I know it like the back of my hand. I used to work construction in all of those streets up in there. Actually works construction in the U.N. And um, the parking around there doesn't exist for New Yorkers. It doesn't exist on the street for um, anybody who's not a diplomat. And the diplomats run roughshod over our city. They run roughshod over our laws. They run roughshod over our symbols and traditions in this country. Get out. Go build the U.N. in Kabul. How's that? Go somewhere in India, okay, where some monkey is throwing feces from you at the side of the road or something along those lines instead of, uh, you know, one of, if not the greatest city in the world. So get out of there if you don't like it. So that's that. I'd like to know what you think about this. Is the U.N. on its way out? Has it's fulfilled its usefulness in the planet. Right now, I just think it's a corrupt organization doing the work of dictators, despots, and gangsters around the country. And as Nikki Haley said the other day, they will be watching the vote and they will be taking names. President Trump said earlier today that they'll be watching and they're getting money. They, they take millions, billions of our dollars and then they vote against us. And you know what? That's not going to happen anymore. Let them vote, he said. We don't care. So I'd like to know if that, that language is good or bad. I think it's great. I think it's bold. I think it's forceful. I think it shows leadership. I love the strong language, and I have felt that the U.N. has been useless for a long time. And we're also going to continue to take your calls on the issue of the tax cuts, the tax plan as well, because we have a bunch of calls, a lot of people are concerned about that, how it's affecting them. We've heard from people from California. We've heard from people from New York. I, what I like to do is when we're doing a topic, we uh, you know we intro a new topic, but we leave the door open for the other topic so everybody can get their, get their say in here. So that's the case there, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. Nikki Haley talking tough, doing a great job at the U.N., the U.N. taking up great real estate in the United States, right, in New York City. They should, first of all, be out of business, but at, at the very least, out of New York. And then again, the tax cut, hitting everybody in their pocket. Everybody's getting crazy about it one way or the other, and I'd like to know where you stand. Let's get back to the phones. John at WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation with Lou Pate. How are you? What's up, Lou? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. Thanks for holding. Uh, by the way, Nikki's doing a great job. I think she's uh, doing an incredible job there. She's doing great. She is. She is. She, 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 she's uh, fulfilled my expectations and more. She's definitely stepped it up from what she was doing down there in South Carolina, I'll tell you. Absolutely. Listen, I'm a, I'm a real New York conservative, not one of these flybys. With the organization I belong to, I've walked, for, uh, I've walked during elections door-to-door for Republicans or conservatives uh, for elections, including this past November. Lou, since when did it become okay for the party to stick it to our own? And I'm talking about the taxes. You're taking earned income from the people who are actually working in New York, which is not many to say the least, and in other blue states, and redistributing elsewhere in the country. It has never been okay, but it is the norm. I'm not saying it's right, but it has been the norm on both sides of the aisle for a long time. I, Republicans and Democrats, I don't think any politicians care about you or me or, or our families, John, or any of the other families in the Savage Nation listening. They, they, they do what they have to do to keep their death grip on power. I, the issue of the tax cut. Okay. Overall, I hope it is good because I hope it's good for the economy. I hope that the companies start hiring. There was some great feedback yesterday. Wells Fargo, Boeing, AT&T, Comcast, and other countries seem to be answering the call. I don't know if that was an orchestrated thing that was set up ahead of time, but it certainly looked good yesterday when it comes to the optics. Will these jobs be created? 
will people think different of it when they get more money in their check? I don't know. That remains to be seen. But I will tell you this, and I'm on of the same political leanings as you, John. This was pushed through so fast because although I feel the president has had a very good year, he needed something to push it over the goal line. He needed something big. And outside of some Supreme Court justice dying and him putting in another uber conservative such as Neil Gorsuch, which I approve of, um, you know, you weren't going to get anything else. That's how. That's why it didn't take them two years to do this. It just took them a few months. They needed a big win as a cherry on the Sunday for the year. What do you think? He needed something else in his pocket. We all needed that. He, you know, with, with everybody hitting him hard, you know, from unfortunately both sides of the aisle, 100%. But, Lou, I think the right way to do this was to hold on to as much of the tax bills he came up with, but maybe try to, you know, give some notice for assault, make, make the states aware that in a year, two years, you know, this is going to be uh, eliminated. You know, look. You mean the uh, state and local... Uh tax deductions yes sir mm, but you know what it's not affecting the overall majority of the country i'm not saying that's right or wrong or i agree with it like i said i'm not in salesman mode here i'm just saying that the places where people are being affected most in a negative way about this are states that did not support Trump. Now, people who support him from within those states, that's not fair to them, but then people say life is not fair. I don't think it's an accident. Me, personally, do not think it's an accident yeah. that, it, as I said earlier, that it, this, is for, this is mostly affecting negatively states that will not vote for him in 2020. You know, when they, when they listen, when our founders writing up the Constitution, when they, you know, later on, Bill of Rights and whatnot, were they looking at different parties and say, hey, we're going to do one thing because, you know, the Blues haven't agreed with us in the past? No, they come on. They did everything together. You know what I mean? This, why You're can't right. You but it, but it, was, it, was, it was a different time then. You Look at what President Trump is facing. You have the enemies. Okay, on the left, we know where they're coming from. They're one trick pony, Pelosi, Schumer. You and I both know what they're going to say tomorrow and next year. Uh, but the bigger hurdle he has, and it's not the media, we also we all know the lies that they're going to say. They're just an arm of the DNC. The problem he has is on the Republican side. This is the first thing that Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell have ever worked with him on because they needed a win as well. Okay, they're going to probably lose control of the Senate, probably lose control of the House comes 2018, unless a lot of changes come. And they just worked with him on this. Um, as Dr. Savage said in, uh, in Trump's war is battle for America. The, the first chapter there is the enemies within, John. So, uh, you know, he, he's got it coming from every angle. He, he's out there alone on this, and he needed a big win. And unfortunately for you, a supporter in a very blue state, you're going to get hurt, sadly. You know, I think one, just one last point. If sure. you, you know, I, I think one thing they might have wrote off and they didn't put much thought into is they're forgetting about the local races, local government, then that you know, house seats and senate. You know, if you get enough people annoyed. Oh, you're right. They're rolling the dice. That is a brilliant point, John. They're rolling the dice. Could come, you know, red seats of upstate New York and red seats in down in Southern California and San Diego and Orange County, just south of Los Angeles. Yeah, those those seats will now be at risk. But you have people like Peter King in Queens, very vocal about why he was against this. And, um, you know, they're rolling the dice on that. So they're hoping that the money comes in other ways, and then people will kind of block it out. But uh, right today, it's still fresh. I'm not getting that feeling. But, John, i got to run, but thank you very much. Do appreciate your call, but I understand your frustration as well. And that brings me to the question of, you know, where you are listening out there, the millions of people listening to the Savage Nation. Is there anybody out there in a state where it is affecting you positively? It's affecting me positively down here in Florida, but outside of New York, outside of California. And if you're holding... Please continue to hold. We're going to get to all of your calls. But please keep in mind there are just two shopping days left to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the Christmas tree this season. Right here from you on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. 
Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Nearly 145 million middle class families under 200,000 will either get tax hikes. Can we have order, Mr. President? The Senate will be in order. This is serious stuff. We believe you're messing up America. You could pay attention for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to the Savage Nation. No one's taking Chuck Schumer seriously anymore. Welcome back, Lou Pate, in for Dr. Savage here on the Savage Nation. And be sure to check out michaelsavage.com for your latest headlines. And while you're there, you'll see the advertisement for God, Faith, and Reason, Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller list. list. And they are only two shopping days left before Christmas. It snuck up on us. Only two shopping days left. You can pick up God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the tree this Christmas. You will not be disappointed. 855-400-SAVAGE. We're going to get right back to your calls after our break at the bottom. I want to give everybody enough time to get their full opinion in. But that was the voice of uh, Senator Chuck Schumer from New York. A uh, New York caricature, a New York cartoon character, if I, if I can say. I remember him from growing up there. And he's been saying the same thing since I'm a kid. But the thing is, now he's starting to sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Charlie Brown's teacher actually gets more respect than Chuck Schumer gets now. And you see it from his own colleagues. I mean, the United States of America, the Senate, a senior Senate leader moaning on the Senate floor. The problem is he's saying the same old thing. Just like I said earlier in the show, and bears worth repeating. He's just saying the same thing over and over, whether it's repealing Obamacare, whether it's net neutrality, whether it's the tax bill, regardless of what it is. His reaction and the reaction of the Democrats to everything is that people will die. How people are going to die from net neutrality is beyond me, okay? And, you know, the lie that 13 million people will be thrown off health care because of this tax break. In that soundbite, he was nearly 145 million middle class families making a wah, 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 wah. Chuck Schumer, resign. Take all that money you've made over the years. Come down here to South Florida. Boca Raton. <laughs> I'll introduce you to a couple of people. Maybe they'll let you in their bridge game. Please, get new material or get out. out. We'll continue to take your calls. Nikki Haley and the U.N., the resolution went through today, the anti-American resolution. And also, we'll continue to take your calls on the tax cut. Tis the season for Dr. Savage's new book, God, Faith, and Reason, right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Your your job is to use the democratic talking points. I understand that. <laughs> Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage along with Team Savage. Jim and Clinton is a team effort here. And remember, go to, to michaelsavage.com, get all your latest headlines. We talked earlier, Ben Rhodes wishing death on Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, and Mike Pence. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Leave the jokes to the comedians, please. In the meantime, though, remember, there are only two shopping days left for you to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason, Put God Under the Tree This Christmas. That was Mitch McConnell slapping down a liberal lemming in the media, asking the uh, Democratic talking points in relation to Chuck Schumer saying, you will rue the day again. Occupy Wall Street. It doesn't matter what it is. It's always death and you will rue the day. How's about doing something to try and help the people instead of just doing the opposite? Now, we heard from a lot of people who are against uh, the tax cuts, who are conservative because they live in New York and they live in California. We understand where you're coming from, but you heard that lemming in the media talk to Mitch McConnell, and I mentioned earlier that 33% of Americans do not like the tax pound. This is because it is a great job pushing the negative narrative about 
tax cuts for the rich and taking away health care for kids and so on and so forth that the Democrats are doing and colluding with the media, like the way I did there. I got the word colluding in there. But I want to hear from people who this benefits and the states that they're targeting, Florida and whatnot. So let's just go to my currently native state, Will, on WBOB. Welcome to the Savage Nation with Lupe. Thank you for holding. Hey, not a problem. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I'm actually kind of happy about this this uh, tax bill because I'm going to get my taxes lowered. But all those people who are crying about it, y'all been living in these states that, that have been doing this to y'all this whole time, but the rest of the states don't get no deduction on their taxes. So on the, on their state taxes, we don't have a state tax. Well, well I got to tell you, Will, a lot of people don't realize that you're, you're in Jacksonville. I'm just south of you. Uh, well, about a five-hour drive. I'm down in uh, Palm Beach County. And, yeah, we have no state income tax here in the state of Florida. A lot of people do not realize that and how much money that you and I both bring home uh, because of that. Same thing in the previous state that I lived in, which was Washington State, having lived in Seattle. Although it's a blue state because the majority of the people live in Seattle, the uh, the rest of the state uh, east of uh the Puget Sound area is all red. No, in, no income tax there. That's a little liberal secret that they have up there, Will, that they don't want you to know about. <laughs> they like no taxes. They like bringing home more of their money, which, as you know, in Florida is the way it should be, no? Exactly. That's the way it should be. And I mean, if you don't like it, vote those people who are raising your taxes out. And if you can't, move the floor. No. Don't move to Florida. No, don't move. We got got too many coming in here already. You know, my my uh, my commu- my community here is turning into the sixth borough. Will you know? I, I I love my I love my native New Yorkers, but you know, I visit them enough. You know. <laughs> now, come one, come all. Will and I are just kidding. But Will here, it says here, we in Florida deserve it. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, they they we we've been paying our full fare all of the taxes every single time. We don't get a deductible. So now everybody's on the same wavelength, and just because your state's got higher taxes don't mean we have, we should have to deal with that. All right, well said. Thank you very much, Will. Next time I'm in Jacksonville, I will definitely uh, look you up. Appreciate it. Let's go to uh, Bob, WABC. How are you, Bob? Welcome to the Savage Nation with Lou Pate. Yeah, hello. Hey, how are you? Thanks for holding. You mentioned deregulation before. And, of course, you know, for small businesses, sometimes you have 200 pages of regular. You're right on that. But let's look at the big picture with big items. The Republican philosophy of deregulation contributed in the, in the mid-'80s to the savings and loan crisis, where anybody could come from India and on a street corner could open up a, a savings and loan institution. Right. It, the Republican philosophy of deregulation definitely contributed in 2008 to the Wall Street recession and Lehman Brothers going bankrupt where they were gambling and bundling mortgages and knowing that the federal government would bail them out. Well, that was a combination effect. More, I put, I disagree with you on that. That was more Bonnie Frank and his crew with uh, that led to the recession um, beginning in January, as I mentioned earlier, in January of 2007 when the uh, uh, Democrats took over the Senate and the House, but during the Bush administration, because Obama was running against John McCain at the time, they threw that whole thing on um, Bush and his presidency and blamed him because during his time, let's face it, the Republicans were spending like drunken sailors. It wasn't just Barney Frank. They were doing anything they could get away with, knowing that the government would bail them out. And I'll say another uh, form of hypocrisy. When the Republicans said, well, it's capitalism. If, uh, if Detroit, uh, the auto industry goes bankrupt, well, that's capitalism. You know, the famous editorial by Romney in the Times, uh, let, let Detroit go bankrupt. I know he didn't write the headline. They wrote it. But that was their philosophy. And guess what? And they called, they called GM government motors. They called Obama used car salesman. And here's the hypocrisy. Remember, yeah, but I don't think, I don't think if, if an industry or a company is dying, I don't think it should be bailed out. Why should anybody be bailed out? You know, this whole big, too big to fail thing is a farce. It's a myth. If something's going to die, let it die. Well, here's the hypocrisy. Remember back in the mid-'80s when, when Ronald Reagan bailed out Chrysler and Lee Iacocca, the chairman, went on TV thanking Reagan, and he says, we paid back every penny with interest. You Thank you for saving. 
I didn't hear. I didn't see the Republicans railing against Reagan for bailing out Chrysler. Did you? Uh, I was in short pants at the time, but I do. You know, I did look back on that. No, they didn't at the time. But there's a big difference between uh, bailing out a company and bailing out an entire industry. The cl- the cash for clunkers. You know, everybody's getting what? How many thousand back for for a jalopy of a car that they're bringing in? And studies show that that was costing twenty four thousand dollars for the taxpayers. It was a big loss. Okay. I don't know the numbers on Lee Iacocca and Chrysler back in the 80s. I'd have to look back on that. But I do know that Obama bailing out General Motors was a huge loss. And General Motors and everybody who took money from the government wasn't making any money. The only company at that time was the Ford Motor Company who made money. And they were the only company who did not take a nickel from the Obama administration and the government. What does that say, Bob? Well, I don't know what it says, but I know one thing. The hypocrisy was there because the situation was almost identical. Reagan bailed out Chrysler. No no Republican complained about it. But what's this got to do with the taxes? What? What does this have to do with the tax law? The tax law. Well, listen, here, there's another example of a hypocrisy. Do you remember in 2012 the Tea Party wave and everything? Yes. What was one of their main points? The deficit. The government should be like a married couple. You balance your checkbook. Now, now every independent agency on this issue has said that this tax cut is going to balloon the deficit. And I don't see the Tea Party people, re- you know, uh, complaining. Well, listen, about- Bob. Bob, if you're looking for fiscal responsibility from Republicans or Democrats or any politician, you're, you're going to be waiting a long time. It's just not going to happen. Okay, they say what they have to say to get into office, and then when they get into office, they do what they want to do. I'm no fan of politicians. I've made that very clear when I'm here on the Savage Nation. I take both to task. I think they're all a bunch of liars, and I think they're all a bunch of thieves. And I'm not here to sell the tax plan. I'm just asking for people out there in the Savage Nation to tell me what you think. I don't know why, why you're calling up defending the Obama administration and all of that, bringing it back to Reagan and all of that. I mean, it's, it's an interesting history lesson, but if you you're going to look for hypocrisy with politicians. You don't have to look too far on both the right and the left. But thank you, and the left. But thank you uh, for your call. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's go to JC, also in Jacksonville. WBOB. Welcome to the Savage Nation with Lupe. Thank you for holding, JC. How are you? Quite well. Hey, you know um, this tax plan. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like a lot of things about, it, especially the taking away the individual mandate, which is very unconstitutional. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm more on the libertarian wing of the Republican Party, but I, I see this as a as the uh, state not being able to take the state and local deductions. I think that uh, contradicts the Tenth Amendment, states' rights, and the separate between uh, state and federal. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but it seems like that would be. I don't see how the federal government can do that with the state or federal um, for state or local governments well that is actually a good argument to be made with the 10th amendment but you know what people can look at the states and say well maybe we can deduct it and let the state reimburse them it becomes a round robin after a while i mean that is one that would have to be hashed out by people like uh you know the constitutional scholars um when it when it comes to is this violating states rights or not but is definitely uh an interesting point But then, you know, then we can go back and back, J.C., and say, well, you know, can the federal government, you know, force states to force people to buy health care? How can some states be allowed to sell marijuana legally when it violates state laws? You know, it it, it never ends. You could say we had a president in, in former President Obama who refused to acknowledge federal law when it came to immigration and is acknowledging cities and states not to enforce federal immigration. I mean... When you start going to the federal laws versus state rights, it it ping pongs all around, and and the examples of it overlapping seemingly are endless. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree, but I do know that all the people that voted on this bill, when they were sworn in the office, they took an oath to defend the Constitution, and if they're violating their oath by signing something that violates the Tenth Amendment, which is a basic bill of rights from our founding fathers. Uh, that's not a good thing. I think you should take this one up. JC, maybe we'll see you on uh, the cable news programs bringing your case to the Supreme Court. What do you think? Uh, maybe. I don't know. 
don't know. Hey, it, 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 it has happened before, but it's an excellent point. It is an excellent point, but there are numerous examples in history that show that uh, overlap, which shouldn't be. I agree with you. But thank you very much. Enjoy that nice weather there and the money in uh, Jacksonville. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Let's go to John WFTL, a little closer to home to me in Fort Lauderdale. Welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Uh, great. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. What's up? Um, as the other Florida callers, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't love this tax bill. There, it could be a little bit more conservative, but uh, just to hear the New Yorkers cry is uh, is worth the. Uh, with everything. Uh, wait, wait, why? We got our friends at WABC and uh, the Savage Nation affiliates throughout the great state of New York. Why, why don't Why don't you like our brethren from the uh, from the Great White North, John? What's up? I love them. A lot of my friends are are New Yorkers, but uh, you you elect people like Cuomo and raise their taxes, and then why should I pay for that? Uh, the one guy said he was conservative. There, there's, there are more unicorns in New York than there are conservatives. <laughs> that is true. Hey, I'm with you. You make an excellent point. It's why should... I don't want to see the people of New York suffer because that's where my family is, and that's where a lot of my friends are. But it is a legitimate question. Why should you and I down here in Florida pay for it, John? I'm seeing a pattern. I'm seeing, obviously, people very unhappy in California, people very unhappy in New York, and so far... All of the calls that are coming in of people who love it are down here in Florida. I'm on the Atlantic side, and uh, they love it because we're going to benefit immensely here. We already benefit because we don't have a state income tax. But um, that's that's something where people have to look in the mirror. Stop voting in the Andrew Cuomo's and the Bill de Blasio's and all of these other crazies who think that the government money is their money and not the people's money. Correct. I think that's the big difference. The, the Democrats think that they are just allowing us to have more of their money, and it is our money. But just one real quick with Bob, uh, who just was saying the hypocrisy. The difference with um, Lee Iacocca, we, the government loaned him the money, or loaned uh, Chrysler the money to get out of debt and everything, and Obama actually took over GM. That That's socialism, and then what he did was, uh, screw, screw the uh, investors, and then gave the uh, control back to uh, gave the control to the unions. And it was a huge. It was a gift to the unions. And it was a huge loss uh, for the taxpayers. They try to present it like he saved. He saved General Motors. No, he saved the unions, and he he screwed the the taxpayers. Hey, I got to take a break, but uh, thank you for your call. Do appreciate it. Tis the season for God, faith, and reason. Put. Dr. Savage's latest book, number one on the New York Times bestseller list, Under the Christmas Tree. Put God under the Christmas tree this year. There are only two shopping days left for you to pick up a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage. Tis the season for God, faith, and reason. Only two shopping days left until Christmas. Put God under the Christmas tree this year with Dr. Savage's latest book. Number one on the New York Times bestseller list, God, faith, and and reason you and the person you gift it to will not be disappointed trust my words there's not enough god in christmas and dr savage is helping put god under the tree this christmas lou pate in for dr savage as we steamroll towards the uh, christmas celebrations we're talking about the tax cuts we also mentioned about nikki haley and the vote the anti-un resolution vote the whole world is against us except for um, nine countries us bringing our embassy to jerusalem we threw that out there as well but we're hearing from people from california people from new york all throughout the savage nation listening family florida how does this tax bill affect you are you happy are you unhappy is it going to hurt or help the the gop is all of the negative talk coming from the democrats and their lemmings in the media working so far only 33 percent 
think it's a good bill. It's a good plan. It's a good law. Great job by the Democrats. Your calls, 855-400-SAVAGE, coming up. And remember, as we make our way to the top of the hour, God, faith, and reason. Put God under your Christmas tree this year. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage along with Team Savage. Jim and Clint are here. It is a team effort, and I encourage you to go to michaelsavage.com to get your latest headlines. And it tis the season for Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Only two shopping days left until Christmas. This is the best time, the only time to put God under the Christmas tree this Christmas. You will not be disappointed. Welcome back to the Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE. Some breaking news, the United States House of Representatives, Congress, has backed a stopgap bill to avert a government shutdown. Really no drama here. We just wanted to bring it to you, have it here first for you on the Savage Nation. There was talk after the tax bill became law that, well, the next thing on the agenda is to fund the government. And there was a question whether Democrats would force a government shutdown because they were unhappy with some particulars within the tax bill, a bit of revenge there. But it was never really expected. It was only a distinct, it was a very distant possibility. So that is not going to happen. But the government's only funded through January 19th. Republicans had hoped to get it funded through, you know, much further into the fiscal year, if not the whole fiscal year. So we'll revisit this again in January and we'll see how, who's going to, threaten to shut down the government if they don't get what they want and so on and so forth and who will be blamed the republicans always get blamed when the government is shut down so a lot of petulant children there in washington dc term limits term limits i'm a big fan of term limits well we've been talking about the tax law the new tax law and who benefits it i throw it out there again to you the savage nation family how is it affecting you do you like it do you not like it so far, people in New York, our many listeners from WABC, people in California, KSFO in San Francisco, and the surrounding stations throughout those two great st- cities and states don't like it because they're not going to get to deduct their state and local taxes. Florida, embracing the tax, the new tax cuts. What about you? 855-400-SAVAGE. We also talked about Nikki Haley calling out the U.N. for bashing the United States for taking our money and then criticizing us for moving Jerusalem, uh, moving our embassy to Jerusalem and declaring Israel, uh, Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Uh, we talk about that as well. And we talk about the media, the media and how they are affecting the stories. Again, the tax plan, 33 uh, percent of Americans do not like it. So we're going to continue to take your calls on that. But here in the Christmas spirit, here in the Christmas season, on coming out of Hanukkah, there's always an overlap with our friends of the Jewish faith. The mainstream media is really touting a book depicting Santa Claus as a gay black man. Unbelievable. Mrs. Claus is now a mister, and a new gay-themed Christmas storybook for children has CNN and the rest of the mainstream media, ooh, they're all enamored with it. Here's what I say. I'm not, I'm not mad about this. I'm not anti-gay and I'm certainly not racist. But when controversy is contrived, as this is, you're trying too hard, man. You're just trying too hard. To write a book called Santa's Husband, it's a joke. You're trying to be controversial. Listen, if you're truly controversial, you say things that you're passionate about, and it gets people going, and it ticks people off, and it gets you in trouble, or it gets you fired, or whatever. But to like, you're thinking, oh, what can I do? Let's let's make Santa black, and let's make him gay, 
and then let's make them married. I mean, what are you going to have next? You know, you're going to bring in some, you know, you know, Tiny Tim is going to be an Asian kid or something. You know, it's just trying too hard. So you can't get mad when people are trying to come up with tomfoolery out there that's just designed to, you know, tick off people. That's really all it is. But it really is bigger. Can we just have one tradition that we don't change? Can that one thing be sacred? Santa Claus. Santa Claus is not white, he's not black, he's not Middle Eastern, he's not Asian. He is something in the mind of children, okay? There's an innocence that comes with children and Santa Claus. I've been at tons of malls and I've visited tons of Santas. Most of them are in the tradition of the Coca-Cola ad. And yes, that is a white guy. But when children think about Santa, when children look at Santa, when children visit Santa at the mall, they're not looking at a white guy. Okay, the Asian kids don't go, oh, why isn't he Asian? Why isn't he Japanese or Chinese or Korean? And, and the black kids go, and go, why isn't Santa black? It's Santa. Okay, and when he's sitting there a few feet in front of you, it's bigger than life. There's, there's more fear. There's an innocence in being a child. And children, when it comes to Christmas, they want gifts. They want to be recognized as being good for the year, whether it's by Santa or whether it's by their parents. Okay, Don't take the innocence away from children and Santa Claus by politicizing it. This is the one thing that 99.9% .9 of us can get along about. Christmas, Santa Claus, kids, presents, it's fun, okay? It would be nice if there was more of a religious aspect in in Christmas. We're getting more secular, but that's a story for another show. Okay, to write a book, and I don't mind. I'm not promoting it, but it's, I'll tell you what it's called: Santa's Husband. No one's going to buy it. Tells the story of a black Kris Kringle and his white husband living in holy matrimony at the North Pole. Okay, you can't get mad about this because they're just trying too hard. Contrived controversy is never real controversy, okay? Like I said, I was talking to Jim before the show. I was like, what are they going to do, rewrite a Christmas carol? You're going to make Ebenezer Scrooge an Asian guy, and, and you know, Tiny Tim will be, what, some homeless black kid, and, you know, it's on, on and on and on. It's just, it's just dumb. Certain things can't be changed. Certain things sh shouldn't be changed. Some characters, whether it be in a movie, whether it be in a book, or whether it be in folklore, are in the mind of the beholder. Okay, we have graphic descriptions of what Santa Claus looks like. And there is not a kid in the world who has a problem with it. Unless, of course, they're being fed negativity from their parents, or regardless of whatever their background is. Santa and children. It's pure. It's innocent. It's fun. When you have children in the home, it makes Christmas better. And I've, I've dressed as Santa. I've been in homes where people have come in and Santa has, has visited. And the kids are wide-eyed, okay? When you go to the mall, they're wide-eyed. Kids from every background. It's not about where they're from. So I'll just get that out there. Can we, can we have one tradition that we cannot change? Can we not politicize Santa? Christmas is already politicized enough. But do we have to politicize Santa as well? Can't you put it down for a week and let the kids have their fun? Because if you're going to politicize Santa, then you're taking the innocence of a childhood away. Okay? And I really feel bad for children who have to live in a home where the adults in the home, whether they be the parents, the grandparents, the aunts, or the uncles, politicize Santa. Because you want everybody to be the same. He's a non-binary Santa. <laughs> but first, let's see. Let's let's be fair. Let's hear the clip. Clip sixteen, please, Jim. This is a Daniel Kipplesmith. He's the author of the Gay Married Santa in uh, Santa's Husband book. It was sort of inspired by the uh, annual tradition we have in this country of pretending that there's a giant war on Christmas <laughs> and that uh, traditional Christmas is under attack. So, um, uh, among other things, uh, we were uh, reading all of the news about uh, the Mall of America hiring a black Santa Claus last year. And uh, me and uh, my now wife uh, made a joke on Twitter that uh, if we ever had a child, they would only know about black Santa Claus. And if they saw a white Santa Claus at the mall, we would just explain, well, that's his husband. 
leave the jokes to the comedians. <laughs> Him and his wife, boy, I want to invite them to a party. Here's the deal. He, it's funny because he says we, we have in this country uh, pretending that there's a giant war on Christmas and that a traditional Christmas is under attack. Well, yeah, just your book, Santa's Husband Attacks Traditional Christmas. That's the irony there. So like I said, put it down for a day, Kibble Smith and your wife. You're not going to be playing the comedy clubs in New York City or Minneapolis anytime soon it's just a joke again if you're going to be controversial be controversial uh in the meantime we're talking about the tax bill we're talking about the u.n resolution we're talking about the house approving a stopgap spending bill to avert a government shutdown well we're talking about santa so let's get back to the phones uh let's go to john wabc welcome to the savage nation how are you hey love the show I just wanted to bring up a quick point, because the media's got us whipped up into a frenzy up here with this $10,000 limit on your state and local tax deduction. But we're missing one key point in the conversation, and that's they doubled the standard deduction. Right. So let's take, let's take the police officer with the uh, $16,000 in property taxes. This year, he had a $12,000 standard deduction, so obviously he's going to itemize and and uh, because it's sixteen thousand dollar property tax, but this coming year, it's twenty four thousand dollars for a family. So basically, I don't think he's going to be hurt in this situation. Now, well, that's what the Republicans are hoping. That's an excellent point, John. That's what the Republicans are hoping, and that's what I was alluding to earlier when I said that they hope that the, when the money starts coming in from all the various different angles, I told you I wasn't going to numbers crunch because that's boring and recite numbers. Um, they're hoping that one outweighs the other, but. It comes back to the point that 33% of Americans, John, do not like this tax plan, and that is because the media keeps beating the same um, lack of deductions now, the state and local deductions in New Jersey, New York, and California over it, just like they beat the Russian collusion thing for 11 months. And it, and it's working because look at all the calls that are coming in from people from the blue coastal states who are upset about this, but they don't realize, and it depends on everybody's own situation, that they could make it up elsewhere. But, John, thank you for your call. Do appreciate it. We'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back. 855-400-SAVAGE. Tis the season for God, faith, and reason. That is Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller list. Only two days left to pick it up, but two days left for shopping before Christmas. Put God under the tree this Christmas. My name is Lou Pate. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. I guess it's very simple when you think you haven't heard this expression, but we are making America great again. You haven't heard that, have you? Paul Ryan uh, and Mitch, it was a little team. We just got together and we would work very hard, didn't we, huh? It seems like it was a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun when you win. <laughs> Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. Two shopping days left. Pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Tis the season for God, Faith, and Reason, and put God under the tree this Christmas. You will not be disappointed. Well, here's an anomaly for the show. A listener from WABC New York who supports the tax plan. Robert, welcome to the Savage Nation with Lupe. Thank you for holding. Hi, thanks for having me on. Now, you support this plan even though you're in New York. Now, you've heard a lot of your, your neighbors uh, in New York calling and, and from uh, San Francisco not happy with not being able to, you know, the salt state and local taxes. How come? Well, how come you support it? Well, I think a lot of people don't understand the way taxes work. That's part of the problem, coupled with all the negative publicity that's coming out of the media for this plan. The one thing that nobody talks about is how the tax rates are going down. In, from 15 to 12, uh, from 25 to 22, and from 28 to 24 percent. 
Now this has a well. What about the uh, capital gains? The uh, thirty-nine to twenty-one. I'm just talking about the average guy in New York that oh, just okay. pays his taxes and itemizes his deductions like me. For the most part, these reductions in the tax rates will offset the taxable income increase that you may have under this plan. Can you say that again? What I'm saying is that your taxable income may go up because you're going to have certain deductions. But when you bring your taxable income to the newer rates, it's a good chance that it'll overall tax make and you'll yeah that, that's what they that's what they were talking about in february you'll start seeing more of your money coming home with you so it comes back robert to the issue of 33 percent of americans do not like the tax plan and you mentioned the media obviously they're doing a good job if the even if it's just adding to confusion and people maybe don't believe it 100 percent, but they think that they're just going to be paying more and corporations and rich people are going to be paying less Got to admit, from a public relations standpoint, the media is getting the job done for the DNC. I agree, but like I said, it's not how much you take home. I can take home more money under any plan. All I have to do is is have less money withheld. That's not the point. At the end of the year, you have a tax liability, and that's where you figure out whether you had enough withheld or you didn't have enough withheld, and then you'll either pay or get a refund. A lot of people don't understand how this works. Well, it's very confusing. Well, taxation should be a mandatory cost in college because everybody pays it. But going on... Yeah, but the tax, the former tax code was like 60,000 pages or something like that. Just being able to do your tax return. You got most people in this country can't do their tax return, and yet they have an opinion on this plan, which is in itself ridiculous. If you don't know anything about taxes, how can you even make an opinion? Well, it comes down to the basics of people. Am I going to have? Am I going to get to keep more of my money or not? That's all people care about. They don't care about the nuts and bolts of it. You know that. Yeah. Well, that's true. So let's say they take home more, but the the benefit of this plan also is you now get a tax credit, and that credit used to be phased out at an income level of one hundred ten thousand. Now that credit is doubled. And that's a dollar for dollar credit, and it doesn't get phased out till your income is four hundred thousand. So that helps a family with young children. There's a lot of things in this plan that are going to help people, and they don't know it yet. Right. Okay. And I'll call one. And, and, and to to your credit, and a previous caller had also uh, pointed that out. Robert, I got to go. If you're holding, please continue to hold. Continue to hold. It's the home stretch. We're going to get right to your calls right after this break. But remember. God, Faith, and Reason, Dr. Savage's latest book, Put God Under the Christmas Tree This Season. Lou paid in for Dr. Savage here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. The individual mandate is being... Repealed. When the individual mandate is being repealed, that means Obamacare is being repealed. So the individual mandate is being repealed. So in this bill, not only do we have massive tax cuts and tax reform, we have essentially repealed Obamacare, and we'll come up with something that will be much better, whether it's uh, block grants or whether it's taking what we have and doing something (coughs) terrific. But Obamacare has been repealed in this bill. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. Tis the season for God, faith, and reason. Only two shopping days left for you to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the tree this Christmas with his great latest book. You will not be disappointed. And as a gift... You'll be the hit of Christmas, trust me. Plus, there's not enough God in Christmas anymore. We're getting away from that, and it it really is a negative thing. But let's get back to the phones. Carl, KBET, Las Vegas, welcome to the Savage Nation with Lou Pate. Thank you for holding. Yeah, Mr. Pate, I talked to you quite a long time ago. I'm retired as a clinical psychologist. I'm in Las Vegas, but I own a, a property in South Florida, Bell Harbor area, which is off of Miami. Anyway, oh, yeah, just about 50 miles south of me and about uh, $10 million away. <laughs> yeah, not quite, just nine. 
<laughs> uh, what I want to say is, look, this new tax plan, it's going to be great for me. I own three or four real estate limited liability corporations, which are going to do great for me. The president has between three and 400 LLCs. Just before, you remember Senator Corker, just, he was, no, 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 no. At the last minute, they put in tremendous advantages for LLCs, real right. LLCs, which he has, and immediately he voted for them. Well, I'd rather give Yeah, they, they literally, on, on the, uh, Bob Corker on the way out the door was literally bought and paid for uh, by that which you just cited, yes. Yeah, but I mean, I just assume give up, but I, look, I can't live any better, basically, than what I do. Uh, I'd rather give that up, to be honest with you. The middle class is not is not going to make out, and below middle class, what they you heard they will, it won't. And when the president stands up there, you heard him make a speech. Wait, hold on, back up, back up. You say you're just you're just giving me what I'm hearing on TV. I mean, they're, they're, maybe they're not going to do as well as uh, some other groups, but they're not going to lose either. All right, but what I'm trying to say is, what hurts me, what throws me off on a lot of people, is you hear the president standing there speaking, this is not going to be any good for me, this is going to hurt me, this is going to, well, you know it's a bunch of junk, that's just a psychological tell that he wants you to believe me, he says, he wants you to believe him. Well, it's going to do them a wait, lot wait, of- wait, 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 what, what are you basing that on? In his income bracket, I mean, and for Sarah Huckabee Sanders was talking about it as well, he will, he will take a personal hit. This, 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 Carl, this sounds more like you just don't like Trump, which is okay. And then for, for you, Carl, and the people just joining us, I told you the story before. I talked to my neighbor next door, dyed in the wool, a uh, crazy liberal from Vermont, although a very nice guy, retired teacher, is going to make a, a boatload of money off of this, but doesn't like it because it's coming from Trump and the Republicans. To me, that makes no sense. You, you got multiple homes, one in Bal Harbor, not too far from me. I'm on South Florida here. Next time you're in Bal Harbor, look me up. Uh, it's You're going to make money, but you don't like it. Why? I'm just saying, uh, what he puts people off. I'm sorry to say it. But he stands there, and you heard him say... I'm no, 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 you got to speak for yourself, Carl. He's putting you off, which is okay. You are entitled to your opinion, but obviously he's elected president of the United States. He's put a lot of people on then off. Uh, little by little, it's getting smaller and smaller. If you're, if, you're, if you're listening to CNN and MSNBC, yes. But if you look at, I don't like the polls because the polls were all wrong when it came to his election. And, Carl, it's okay if you don't like them. That's fine. You are entitled. But you can't just paint the whole country with a broad stroke and the tax bill or law with a broad stroke because you don't like it. And and if you're not happy with the money that you're going to make, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in the Savage Nation listening area going to say, then donate it to charity. Any positives you have from that do something with it that'll make yourself feel better but don't complain about it because you don't like the president that makes no sense well i do donate to charity i'm sure the president as much as he does and if i did it would be nothing but that's beside the point uh i think the man but is- you're, com- you're complaining because you're going to benefit because you don't like the man who came up with the plan that to me is illogical it's crazy but i think he's an inc- look I, i'm retired i was a clinical psychologist the man has got more problems than... Oh, come on, <laughs> Carl. You're embarrassing yourself now. You, just say it. I don't like President Trump. I'll respect that more because you're just being honest. You're not going to start psychoanalyzing him and get into the whole Joe Scarborough, he's got dementia and he's crazy. It's got no credibility. You don't like the man, that's fine. You get another chance not to vote for him in 2020, but you're coming up here with all of these crazy left-wing talking points, and you sound like, number one, a nice guy, you sound like an intelligent guy, and you are obviously a successful guy, Bal Harbor. But you're diminishing yourself by just regurgitating left-wing talking points. But I like I like the truth. Do you think this man tells the truth consistently? I think who I, who, who who among us tells the truth consistently, Carl? Do you think Obama did? Do you think George W. Bush did? Come on. You're holding up to a standard that cannot be reached, and you know that. Did Obama always tell the truth? No. Are we going to crucify him for it? No. Every lie Obama might have told, he tells a hundred. 
Sister, sister. Oh, come on. Now, I got to move on. I think we made the point here. Just say you don't like them, and then let's move forward. Thank you very much, Carl. I'll see you when you come to South Florida. It, 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 honestly, folks, like my neighbor, you, you're embarrassing yourself. It's okay to dislike the president. Okay, It's okay to dislike him politically. It's okay to dislike his policies, even though you have never met him and most of us never will meet him. It's okay to think you dislike him personally. It's called freedom of expression, freedom of speech. But you have to understand, when you're talking the way, Carl, you were just talking, you sound just angry, and you're not making sense, and you just don't like him. That's it. All right, let's get back to the phones. Uh, Martin, W-B-O-B. Martin, welcome to the Savage Nation with Lou Paid. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Lou? Merry I'm okay. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. You're our first Merry Christmas of the day. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. I'm uh, and that's, uh, same to all your listeners as well. We um, appreciate it. I wanted to make a point. Um, I believe this is my belief. I haven't heard anybody say this, but I believe that um, the reason that Trump and Republicans have gotten rid of the deduction for the the state income tax is is they're playing the long game. Um, and, and what I mean is, is, uh, Chuck Schumer and, and Nancy Pelosi, they have what I call a checkers mentality. Um, they can't think beyond the next move. It's either jump or be jumped with Nancy and Chucky. But Trump is a chess player and a good chess player knows that you might sacrifice a piece now for the benefit of the future of the game. And he realizes that even though, and I feel sorry for the, the people in New Jersey, New York, California, who are going to take this hit, but he knows that when they have to pay that much more and their Democrat friends also have to pay that much more, it's going to open a conversation and they're going to say, hey, we need to get these Democrat thieves out of our state capital and start putting some people in that care about us rather than taking our money. So, Martin, there's only one thing wrong with what you just said. You are making entirely too much sense. <laughs> that 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 and and and, and, and my, my family and uh, well my family there they're on the right but my friends and all of the people I've met over the years growing up in New York City they, it doesn't matter, Martin. The logic and, and making sense like you just did, the brilliant points you just made, you just made, do not matter. It all goes out the window. Look, we just had Carl in Las Vegas. You heard him. Sounds like a really nice guy. And he's successful, and he's going to be making money off of these taxes, but he's mad because of the source of it is a guy he doesn't like. It's irrational, and that's what we're seeing across the nation. I come across so many people from a couple I know, lawyers from Illinois, so angry, especially the wife, still about the election. It's like you got to get over it. it it's, you know, it's, it's over a year ago already, but when you're dealing with blue state people in a blue state who are irrational, Martin, they're not going to listen to the common sense that you just well laid out. Well, I don't know. I, but they're, I think what they are going to pay attention to is the reduction in the amount of money that they get to keep at the end of the year because of this, and they're going to start rethinking, wow, should we reelect Jerry Brown? Should we keep the, the Cuomo cartel in, poli in, in office? They're going to rethink this, and so, yes, it's going to give them a hit in the pocketbook, but it's going to definitely make them think, and that's what I believe that Trump and the Republicans have done this for. That is their long-game reason for doing this. All right. Well, time will tell, as I said earlier, but uh, thank you for your call. Do appreciate it, Bob. Let's move along. Let's go with amazing people from New York who are now calling in from uh, our, from WABC. Andrew at WABC, you say other states should not bail us out. Interesting. Can you elaborate, please? Welcome to the Savage Nation. And I just want to say to Carl, Carl, you could keep your doctor if you like your doctor. Premiums went down. <laughs> So Obama told Sarah. <laughs> well, that's, I was thinking that when I said Obama has lied, but I didn't want to get into that whole health care. But I appreciate you saying that. I mean, they're they, they're they're just politicians. It's it's you know who who among us has not embellished? We'll use the word embellish. What do you say? Even better. And what I was saying, I'm here in New Jersey, and most of my fellow New Jerseyans complain, and and um, 
governor-elect Phil Murphy literally ran on raising property taxes, but I think that's based, they thought they were going to still get that rebate. But I don't think it's fair that South Carolina, where my best friend who lived in New Jersey his whole life moved to, my sister just bought a house there, they shouldn't have to bail us out. We don't manage our state properly. The Democrats usually run it. They can't live within their means. So why should states that are better run have to pay taxes to bail us out? That would be like the equivalent of if there's 50 houses on a street, all worth the same, everybody makes the same money, and the five people on that street don't manage their money, they blow money recklessly, and then the other people on that street have to pay tax to bail you out for your mortgage. No, we need to get our act and stop grubbing off the more responsible states. Well, well said. Thank you for your call. Do appreciate it. In the blue states, and those listening at KSFO and, and out on the West Coast and those listening at WABC, it's not that you're not allowed to, to make those deductions anymore. You have to ask, why are we so highly taxed? That is really the problem. Dave at WABC says there are conservatives in New York City. Where are they outside of my family, Dave? Welcome to the Savage Nation with Lou Pate. How are you? Thanks, Lou. Doing great. Enjoying the show. Um, Thank you. Those are all to state with me. I'm not in New York, so I'm not on ABC. I'm great stations. Thank you for listening. We're now, so where are you at on this? Um, I, I'm kind of on board with it. Because even though I'm losing my state income tax deduction, if they're upping my standard deduction, I probably wouldn't itemize anyway. And you know, you realize you are only the third person who has brought that up throughout the whole show which is making uh, me and Jim and Clint cringe because th- this this kind of bears witness to the fact that only 33% of the people do not like the plan. Um, uh, uh, 30% of the people uh, like the plan. It's because, it's because the media is doing their job. Why do you think the media is so effective? Sh- Schumer and Pelosi and CNN and MSNBC beating the drum that so many people dislike it. Right, so I very much agree with your last caller that maybe the long game is let's get these people out of office, lower the taxes in the states, and we'll all be happier. You know, if, if, if a loser like de Blasio didn't just win re-election, I would say maybe there was hope, but there's no hope in these blue, in these uber blue cities. It, it's just not going, not going to happen, sadly enough. But hey, I gotta run, I gotta take a break, but thank you for your call. Do appreciate it. A wealth of information in a, in a brief call. Lou Pate here with you. You are listening to the Savage Nation, the home of God, faith, and reason. Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller. Only two shopping days left until Christmas for your chance to pick up God, faith, and reason. Put God under the tree this Christmas. Lou Pate here with you. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. It is the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage. And make a programming note, I'll be back here tomorrow as we steamroll our way towards Christmas where we will continue the conversation. Uh, In the meantime, as we roll towards Christmas, tis the season for God, faith, and reason. I cannot emphasize it enough. Dr. Savage is latest in a long line of New York Times bestsellers, God, Faith, and Reason. It is time to put God under the Christmas tree this season. And did you? it really snuck up on us. Only two shopping days left for you to pick up a copy of this book. I always say, tis the season for God, Faith, and and reason. And as we make our way to the top, well, the tax law has been the talk of the show. There was a lot of other uh, items that we touched on as well. Hey, some people this is going to be beneficial for, some people it is not. It depends on where you live in the country and so on and so forth. You can't please everybody. Not everybody is going to be happy. In the long run, will it be beneficial for the country? Will corporations start hiring if AT&T, Comcast, Wells Fargo, and Boeing and others who immediately made huge proclamations yesterday about the money that they're going to be spending, $1 billion from uh, AT&T and so on and so forth, possibly 
Only time knows. Time will tell. All of the talking heads on TV, they don't know. Only time knows, and uh, we here at the Savage Nation will be around to bring it to you. Dr. Savage will bring it in his unique perspective, as only he can, when it comes around. And that's going to be as soon as February, when people start to see how much they're going to be bringing home and the deductions that come a year later. So it remains to be seen. But in the end, it is a win for Donald Trump and a loser for the DNC, Pelosi, and Schumer. Special thanks to Jim, producing the show, and Clint, Team Savage. I always say I can't do it without you guys, and I mean that. I cannot. It is a team effort here, and I and the listeners appreciate it. Lou Pate, here with you, the home of God, faith, and reason. Put God under the Christmas tree this year. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Savage.